Good morning, it's Jen from Miss Fit Acres. How are ya? I decided to uh, come on here and just have a little chat this morning, having my coffee. Got my kitty here. She's chilling over there. Um, just hanging out. Anyways. So, I am the owner operator of Miss Fit Acres, Nova Scotia. Uh, we are located in Cumberland County, and uh, I hope to. Uh, teach simplistic living and homesteading um, as well as DIY and frugal living techniques to anybody who wants to listen. You know why? Because sustainable living is accessible to everybody. Sustainable living means that we are going to use the most of our resources to live within our means so that we can get ahead financially and use the money that we do have to create the life that we're dreaming of and spending less money on, you know, day to day. So ways that I do that are animal husbandry. So I have chickens, I raise meat birds. Um, uh, next year I hope to have turkeys. Um, and goats. I want to do goat milk soap. Um, we have gardens. Uh, we're in the process of putting up a greenhouse. Uh, I barter and we, um, you know, share with our community. I try and teach as best I can all the skills that I do have. Um, because my end goal here is to teach sustainable living to families so that they can get ahead. Because the worst part about living in the economy today is that the cost of groceries and the cost of living is forever skyrocketing and it's costing far too much money to survive and people aren't able to live. So that's why I decided that uh, I needed to come back to basics go back to our grandparents era, but not to the point where, you know, we're, we're giving up on everything that we've built since then in regards to technology and, um, new systems and new thoughts and new education and new whatever. Um, simplistic living just means that we're going to go back to basics. We're going to simply achieve, um, you know, cost of living and expenses and bills and whatever, and then using the money to live your best life. So some ways to do that are, you know, cutting down on your heating expenses or your overall bills, um, walking more instead of driving, um, you know, so you're spending less money on gas, um, less convenient foods and more, um, bulk shopping, and with bulk shopping also comes meal pl planning and batch cooking. See if you're prepared, you're able to create um, sort of like a, a routine and you're, you'll be able to batch cook once a week and make several meals for future weeks. And if you keep building upon that, you're going to have a freezer full of meals that are prepared and you just need to either heat them up, thaw them out, or, you know, throw them in a crock pot. You know, crock pots are amazing, 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 amazing. I have done a crock pot meal every single day this week, and that helps my family stay on track, have a healthy meal on the table when everybody's exhausted at five o'clock at dinner time. And, um, it also allows for a really quick cleanup. Not only that, I'm not buying takeout for me and my family, which is five people. That's a lot of money. We, we live in a small town. We live in Cum Cumberland County. So we don't have a lot of fast food options. So, you know, you're looking at like McDonald's and Wendy's. All the time. That, that's not good for you. That, that's, not, that, that's not sustainable. That's not um, a healthy lifestyle. And that's not something that is going to financially benefit my family at all by eating McDonald's every day. And, uh, but batch cooking does. Because guess what? I'm doing the same amount of work, but I'm making multiple meals, which means that next week I can have that meal again if I want, or two weeks I can have that meal again. And uh, I'll have to cook that day, technically. No prep, just dump and go. Um, so that's one big way that you can simplify your life and live 
sustainably it is by cooking at home. A little bit of preparation can take you so far. Another way to cost save money is, you know, getting your morning coffee. That Starbucks, that Tim Hortons, that, you know, wherever you go, McDonald's coffee, whatever. You know, that, that few bucks every single day or several times a day, that adds up. So at the end of the month, you think, oh, it's just a cup of coffee. Well, it's a cup of coffee times 30 or 60 if you have two a day that you pay for. That adds up. Now, if everybody in your family is doing that, <laughs> you could buy groceries with that kind of money. You know, <clears throat> it's your mindset. It's how you view saving money, right? So another way we save money in our family is that we have a pellet stove and a wood burning stove. We went out and collected wood from people that had fallen trees and we processed the wood ourselves. We chopped it up, we split it, we dried it out. And you know, it's all about preparation instead of spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on oil or, um, electric heat. It's essentially free. It's just our time and labor, right? And yes, time and labor is, you know, your time and your labor is worth money. However, in the grand scheme of things, my time and labor is going to be stretched further and I'm going to be spending less time and energy heating my home because we're going to have to work less at a job to pay financially a company to uh, heat my home when I can burn wood and, you know, these trees are going to be rotten in somebody's yard. So I'm a being sustainable. I'm using my resources. I'm being responsible. I'm not cutting down trees. These trees have already fallen or it's wood that would go to the landfill. Um, and I am saving a ton of money to keep my home in the long run. So it's like little steps perpetually repeated and built upon is what's going to create a sustainable future for you. It's going to cost little cost savings repeated are going to become big costs, cost savings at the end of the day. And every skill that you add to your arsenal is going to get you that much closer to like a frugal, sustainable life. And it's going to get you closer to the retirement, the vacation that you want or what have you. Not only that, convenience foods are really high in salt. They're really expensive. They have a lot of packaging. And you're not really being environmentally conscious if you're going to the grocery store every single day, if you're buying little size things for the cost that it's going to cost you a big one. You know, I know that a lot of people don't want to go to Costco and drop $600 on a lot of big stuff. But if you shop and price compare and you slowly build your bulk arsenal. So like buy flour this day, buy sugar that day, buy, Oh, the, there's eggs on sale. Well, let's buy eggs on sale. I don't have to buy eggs. I have chickens. I have a lot of chickens. I sell my eggs. They pay for the ones that we eat. So again, I'm helping people because I only sell my farm fresh eggs for $3 a dozen. I am saving my community some money and they're getting a healthy product and their eggs that I'm selling is paying for my chicken's feed, which in turn then pays for the eggs that I keep. Do you see? See how little changes can like make for an insane savings in the grand scheme of things. It's, it's all in the way that you look at things. So let's see. Hmm. We coupon, we price match were available. We bulk, we bulk shop. I meal pat, I meal bat or I meal prep and I batch cook. Um, so when I batch cook, I, I only batch cook like once a week and I put meals in the freezer for, you know, a couple other meals. So I'm cooking once, but essentially I'm having several meals out of it just from cooking once. See, I'm saving time because I'm batch cooking and I'm prepping 
and I'm using less food because I'm using more of the product, which means that it's not going to go bad because I'm using it up. And, you know, I'm going to save some money, which is amazing. Let's see what else. I mean, if you guys ever have any questions or, you know, if you guys have any um, solutions or you want to have a conversation or, or, you know, I'm always open for a round table discussion. I love sharing and bouncing ideas back and forth. I really, really enjoy helping people save money using the most of their resources and, and getting ahead, especially because I'm a mom and I have small children and I, you know, we used to live in a community that was really expensive and it was hard to get by in living in that community. Um, cost of living was really high. It was really, um, you know, nose to the grindstone and don't pick up your head until, you know, you fall into bed. And that wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted to live at all. It wasn't the lifestyle that I wanted to raise my children in. And it's not something that I want to preach into them that you, you have to work until you fall down and, you know, money is the be all and end all because it's really not the be all and end all because you can do a lot without money. You just have to be creative about it. So barter with your friends, you know? Um, I am going to be next year partnering with some farmers and I'm going to raise, uh, some cows so that my family has beef. I think I might do it with a pig as well. I do have a Vietnamese popped belly pig that I rescued and no, she's, she's not going to be bacon. She's definitely a uh, family. And, uh, so, so don't, so don't think that we're going to eat her cause that's not the case. We do have pet animals. We have, I also have food animals. And in my thoughts behind the food animals is that these animals are going to be raised as a family. We are going to raise them with love. They are going to be, you know, really healthy, happy while they're with us and their sacrifice for our family is greatly appreciated and respected. I'm going to make sure that when they're called, they're called respectfully and kindly. They're not stressed. They're not traumatized. They're not abused. And so we have good, healthy meat. The animals are well taken care of. They're not fearful. And um, I'm saving money at the grocery store because my animals are going to be eating good quality food. They're not going to be pumped full of hormones and chemicals. They are uh, free ranged animals. They're going to get sunshine and they're going to be treated just like the ones that are pets until, of course, they're not pets anymore. Which, you know, again, that's part of farming. So, you know, everybody who goes to the grocery store, all of that food had to come from somewhere. And when you are not a vegetarian, those animals that you eat, they come from somewhere too. But it's how they're raised and how they're kept and how they're handled, um, that, you know, for me is important to me that they're not, they're, they're not abused. They have the best life they can possibly have and that their sacrifices are not in vain and they're not abused by any way, shape or form. And of course, no fear. I don't want them to have fear. I want them to know love. And, uh, again, I'm not a vegetarian, so sorry if you are, um, but this is life. There are so many different ways that you can save money on like your cost of living. So, and it just all depends on what you like to do. You need to figure out what your passions are and and sort of what your end goal is and then you build upon it from there like if you want to make goat milk, goat milk soap and crafting stuff and and you want to do that sort of homesteading sort of deal then i'll have to plug in my computer here we're dying um you know then of course your end game is going to be a little different for us um, we are homesteading. Yes. We want to be self-sufficient. Yes. We want to, uh, live within our means. Yes. We want to live 
a healthier lifestyle, healthier food, you know, less reliant on the government and the stores and the, you know, trade system and the transportation system of our products coming from different countries to Canada, like our vegetables. I want to grow hydroponically, um, so that my vegetables for my community, like, my leafy greens, they're not coming from, you know, California, they're, they're coming from my backyard or, you know, what have you. Um, so the end goal of Misfit Acres is I want to teach sustainable living and homesteading. I would like to teach meal planning, batch cooking, and, um, all of these concepts in person to people who would like to learn the concepts but also I want to help everybody that I possibly can to save money, to be frugal, to live within their means, to, you know, be successful in whatever endeavor in regards to homesteading that they choose. Um, even if you don't have a homestead, you can still do homesteading practices. I mean, you can have an herb garden, you can have um, a hydroponic garden. You you don't even have to have a garden if you don't want a garden. I mean, homesteading can be soap making. It could be making your own dish soap and cleaning products. It could be DIY. It could be crafting. It could be, um, you know, whatever, uh, like sustainable living and frugal living and homesteading um, all has to do with living within your means and doing with less, but having a more full and sustainable life and achieving the goal of saving money, living the best, healthiest life you possibly can and moving forward and doing the things that you do want to do with the money that you have. Um, and for me, part of that too, is that, uh, I want to teach my children about, how to grow food, where it comes from, why it comes from that, what you need to do, um, to get the food that you want to eat. Because I think where we have lost our way a little bit in society is that we are too reliant on the transportation system to bring food in. I mean, we all noticed that during COVID when, everybody fear bought the store out. We had a hard time getting food back into the store because of the, <laughs> the COVID problems. I mean, people shouldn't have to be afraid that the store isn't going to have food for them to eat. And if it doesn't have food for them to eat, how are they going to figure out how to feed their families? I mean, with panic, so you need to be mindful of ways that you can cost effectively create the life that you have now, but simplify it, simplify it, less packaging, less salt, less convenient foods, less takeout, less shopping, less buying cheap products that will break because then you're replacing it more often. So if you buy a little bit more expensive product, hopefully it has a guarantee behind it. Your money is going to be stretched further because this product is going to be a better product. It's going to last longer. It's going to be better on the environment because you're not creating five of the other one to replace them as they break. And not only that, like you're going to need less stuff because you're not going to need 75 cups. You're just going to need one or, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's all in, in all in the way that you see stuff, but, uh, yeah, simplistic living and homesteading is, it's a huge concept and there's no right or wrong reason or way to do it. It's all in how your family wants to live and how your family wants to cut costs and where your family can cut costs and also where your passions lie. You're going to be more successful in life if your passions align with um, your way of living because you're going to preach your passions and you're going to be passionate about your passions. And so you're going to want to thrive while being passionate about your topic. So 
you need to uh, figure out what you're passionate about and, and, and figure out how you can lead a frugal, sustainable life while building on your skills that you already have in your arsenal. So, I mean, some people are great gardeners, other people are better shoppers. Well, if you are not a great gardener and you don't have space to garden and you don't want to garden and all, well, then maybe couponing, price matching, and shopping is how you're going to be frugal for your family. You know, there's no right or wrong reason to simplistic living. It's the best part about it. It's, 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 it's amazing. So my concept here is that, um, I'm teaching my kids that I want them to live their lives and explore their dreams and desires and figure out what they want to do and what they're really good at doing so that they can build their career around their passions. And then it doesn't really feel like work at all because they are pursuing their passions, which is kind of an amazing thing for them. Um, and also who doesn't want to make money living their lives and pursuing their passions? I mean, who doesn't want to do that? I mean, it doesn't feel like work if you're pursuing your passions, right? So I don't want them to get a nine to fiver and make the money and, you know, live that kind of lifestyle because if it's not lighting their fire, then they're not going to be happy in their life that they're building for themselves because they're going to be at the mercy of somebody else and somebody else's dream and they're building somebody else's dream but they're not building their own because they're not pursuing their passions. So for me, I have a hundred billion passions because of course I have ADHD. So, you know, simplistic living, homesteading, crafting, cooking, baking, saving money, animals, you name it. I love it all. I love writing. I am creating a cookbook. I am creating an autobiography. I hatch chicks out. I'm going to be raising turkeys next year. I just got a mini pig. You know, I have 14 acres. I love DIY and restoring and rehabilitating, um, homes. I like saving things from the land landfill and repurposing. I love assisting other people live within their means, find their passions, and explore this incredible world that we have to live in with all of these incredible people who have such vast amounts of knowledge that can be assist assisting you in the future, you know, have the best life that you could dream of. You know, so that's why I love YouTube and TikTok and, and, and Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and Google and Pinterest and all these things, because it allows us to connect to communities that share our similar passions or it helps us grow our interests. It helps us to be together as a community and grow as a community and support each other as a community. And I think that since COVID and even before that, we kind of lost community and unity and togetherness. You know, everybody is in the grind to make their lives better, but I think we forgot the, the, the beautiful part of community and farming and, you know, resource sharing and bartering and social responsibility and kindness and like, you know, looking out for each other. And I think that part of that dynamic too has a lot to do with, um, you know, the fact that we're always running to do the next thing. We're always running to pay for the next thing, to buy the next thing, to, you know, make the next dollar to, you know, do whatever. And we're not authentically living within our um, capacity, both emotionally, physically, we're not eating appropriately. We're not getting sleep. We are on technology too much. You know, we're not outside getting the vitamins that we need. And also we're not being social and, you know, sharing the workload like our ancestors did which I think that is really important that we revisit and um, rejoin our community again because um, homesteading and simplistic living 
they're beautiful topics, but homesteading and simplistic living, it's not a solo mission, you know, it's about community and togetherness and resource sharing and um, hope and teaching and um, support and desire and gosh, I don't know, I could go on for hours and hours and hours about homesteading and simplistic living and 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 how passionate I am about unity and community. Uh, but definitely feel free to message me or find me on Instagram, Misfit Acres, Nova Scotia, uh, TikTok, Misfit Acres NS as well. Uh, Facebook, Misfit Acres NS, Pinterest, Misfit Acres NS. Find me on Facebook too, Jen Percy. Come find me. I want to hear about how you are living simply, how you are cutting your resources, how you're getting by with the rising costs of groceries, and uh, how do you make your life simpler? How are you saving money? How are you stretching your dollar? You know, reach out, comment, send me a follow. You know, we need to create a community here and resource share and, you know... I, I can't wait to meet you all. So follow me at Miss Fit Acres NS on all the platforms um, located in beautiful Cumberland County, Nova Scotia. And uh, I can't wait to uh, continue to meet you all and engage with you all. And see Cricket is very excited to, to be part of this too. She's uh, going to be 16 next month. Um, so she's uh, had quite the journey with me too. Anyways. I hope that you'll have a wonderful day and, uh, you know, see what you can do today to create a simpler, more um, sustainable life for yourself today. And uh, drop a like and a follow and, and a share and subscribe. And uh, I look forward to collaborating with you all in the future. See you later.